Welcome back. Um, today we will work on deterministic models to predict um, trends of time series. Um, to follow, um, it would be nice if you can download the data on consumer price inflation. Um, the link um, to the data set um, is uh, um, available um, in the description. Now for this tutorial I will focus on the monthly data which you can obtain um, from this Excel file. And what I have done is I selected one of these time series. In my case I focused on um, the consumer price index for food um, and copy pasted this um, into an Excel file. So the first step is to save the data as a CSV file um, and keep it um, in a folder where we also do our modeling. Um, and um, of course we have to first navigate into this folder so we just copy paste the path, open up our starter do file, start here with the data wrangling, do a change directory command using quotation marks and now we are in, in this folder. This is our working directory now. Um, and then we use in sheet to import the data using and then we have to refer to the name of the data set. Um, and I would use the option clear just to be on safe side because otherwise it might complain if you have any data in memory. Yeah, so if we um, look at a describe command time would be a string um, and the CPI food is a float which is which is absolutely fine. The first task is to convert this string of time um, into something we can actually use for time series analysis. We have a four digit year followed by a gap which will be ignored um, and then the months. Generate um, a date variable um, using the date function. Um, our variable is time and and our structure um, is year and that refers to a four digit year followed by months. So the next thing um, which um, you would like to do is to convert this now into some monthly dates. So I call this m underscore date and then I pass in the date variable. I just do here a format command. I refer now to my M date and then I have a format. Um, now this is up to you what you want. So this is a time format um, and I want to display months as well. But now we have the year which is quite nice and we have months one, two, three and so on. Now we can get actually rid of these two variables. We can tidy this up um, because frankly we don't need them anymore. Then we should um, now um, declare we have a time series. So we can now do a tset command um, and we have our monthly date here and we also specify its monthly um, data using the option monthly. So that should do it um, and then we should be ready to have a look at the time series. And this is CPI food and then we have our M date um, and you see um, for quite some time that um, it's rather stable the food price inflation but then you have quite a few um, chumps actually. <coughs> Need more coffee. Good, you have a few chumps here around uh, the global financial crisis. Quite a sharp increase, then it, it calmed down and again we have this latest increase um, in food prices which of course is um, partly um, due to um, the conflict in Ukraine. Good, so that's my time series and now the idea is I want to start um, doing some predictions. Yeah, So the idea is we look at um, parts of this time series, we cut out the last 12 months because that's my forecasting period. Um, you also call this an out of sample period. So I want to focus on all the information up to the last 12 months. Use this information to predict um, the last 12 months because then I can check how good my model is. Deterministic um, models are very common. They're very easy to use um, but there are limitations and we will explore this um, in um, today's video. If you haven't done anything on regression analysis, I recommend you have a look at the other video I did on regression and how to interpret regression output. In terms of modeling, it would be nice to have a time dimension um, actually as a counter. So what I do is I just simply now count observations. I call this T equal to underscore n. This is simply counting one, two, three up to um, my full time series. I do a little summarize here just to have a little look. So once I have done 
this, you see that my counting goes up to 412. I cut out the last 12 months. Um, and now I just run some regression models. I want to explain my um, CPI food using time. And now you can of course ask yourself, why is this deterministic? Well, it's deterministic because once you know the time, you know the prediction. Yeah, because from the regression model, you can of course get fitted values and it only depends on time. There's nothing stochastic, nothing random to it. So it's a deterministic model. Um, I use here an if um, statement to restrict it to um, the first 400 observations. Um, and then I do an estimate store because later I want to compare different specifications. I'm just now running this. Here we go. And you see that, in fact, it's pretty good, pretty decent. Look at this R squared, quite high, 93%. Um, all highly significant, um, so nothing to worry about. Good. So the next thing I do is I consider higher order terms. Yeah, because usually if you go into higher orders, it will improve your in-sample um, fitting. Um, because I'm lazy, I use a for values command and I start here at um, two, I go up to maybe five um, and I generate some new variables t underscore i, note here the quotation marks, um, equal to my time um, to the power of i. Yeah, always note quotation marks. This is what you need um, for the index you use in a for loop. I just co copy paste that maybe also with the estimate store. I'm not just running several models. I don't want to see the output. So I use a quiet option, open close brackets. Good. So that should be all. I do an estimates table a, b, c, d, e. I want to have stars for significance. I look at my coefficients. I do a fixed format. I do statistics here, AIC, BIC. And I spoke about AIC, BIC when we talked about model specifications. If you missed that one, um, this video covers um, the specification problems. Okay, so that's my first time series and now it's running through all the models. Looking at the AIC, if you want to minimize the AIC, you would actually prefer model E. The same with your Bayesian information criterion. Um, so that's a, a tendency you get in deterministic models that higher orders are usually preferred. Yeah, um, That's very common. So don't be surprised by that. Um, and so we select a higher order model. In this case, if you go up to a polynomial of order five, um, and now the next thing I would like to do is I would like to do some forecasting. Yeah, so let's just um, do a bit of forecasting. Um, and of course, we have now estimated um, this model here. And that's the one we would actually prefer. So I do a little predict here. I call this forecast. Um, and then I want to display using a two way chart, um, the line chart, the original line chart and the forecast and compare the two. And I want to do it first um, in sample. So I use here the if statement and later out of sample and then we have a little chat. Yeah, so we do this copy paste um, and put in here my forecast. So that's, that's all in sample. And I do the same with out of sample forecasting where I simply modify my if statement and just look at the last 12 months. Good, Let, let's have a little look at this one more time. So I have to run it one more time to get my forecast. And now you see here, this is my forecast and that's in sample. And you see, it's actually reasonably good. It looks pretty good. We have very high R squared, as we already know. Um, it, it looks relatively decent, not too bad. And now when I do the out of sample forecasting, um, you see you actually go um, apart quite a bit. Yeah, so the actual inflation, of course, in increased, as we all know, and our forecast would suggest um, a, a short term downward um, development, which um, didn't happen. Yeah, so that's quite a big gap and the gap is widening. So this is very typical. So when you use deterministic models, um, you have to be very, very careful that they tend to be quite good in sample. And you might be maybe okay to do a very, very um, short period forecasting. But once you go quite a bit out of sample, they tend to be absolutely terrible. 
Um, there are underlying reasons for that, and we will go into this in other videos. Um, but have that in mind, deterministic models are of very limited use. Um, there are other problems in here, which we cover in the next video when we talk about stationarity. I see you then.